So here we go, Lady Ada. It's new product time. Yay! Okay, first up, Eagle 7 is out. We have it. We're yes. one of the few people that uh, sell Eagle CAD. Yes. Um, and uh, we picked our favorite versions. So what's what are the kind of the newish things in Eagle CAD? So there's actually, there's, I think there's a lot of bug fixes, but the biggest things are the auto router is much, much better, apparently. Uh, I don't know because I don't really use the auto router, so I will profess ignorance on that. But one thing that I thought was very interesting is they now have a sort of an intermediary 3D format. So you can actually export direct to a 3D. You can tell that they're starting to integrate like Eagle 3D type capabilities into Eagle. So it will actually be able to export um, a basic 3D model that you can use to, uh, you know, kind of get you started on, um, uh, you know, what shape your enclosure might be or how big the circuit board will be, or if you want to 3D print you know, a mold or something. Anyways, um, I just also some usability stuff, I think some menus updated, um, some buttons um, are nicer looking, they're, they're a little bit less Windows um, XP-ish and a little bit more Windows 7-ish. Um, I have yet to upgrade, I'm going to do that really, really soon. Um, I know that people who bought Windows, uh, sorry, Eagle version six since April get a free upgrade. Yeah, April fifteenth. April fifteenth. So if you if you know, yeah. and they still have a free version, and they of course they still yeah. have all the free freemium free yeah. education based etc. It's version. So yeah, I like, right. I like Eagle. So check it out, catsoftusa.com. Okay. Next up, we have a new feature. We'll do this occasionally on the product um, segment. It is journey to the center of the catalog. This is um, we have some products that have been around back in the one hundred. So we're up to two thousand. 30, 20. 2030. 2030. So we have yeah. some uh, other ones. So once in a while, we'll take a journey back in time. And so um, these are just uh, stacking headers. What do these do? Stacking headers. These are stacking headers. And it was, what's funny is that this was like a totally bizarre thing. And um, I think I found these in the For You Con catalog. And I was like, whoa, they're headers with, because people were thinking of using wire wrap sockets. Then I was like kind of noodling around the For You Con catalog. And I found these, these sockets the female sockets with extra long pins. So I got some samples like, I was like, oh my God, these would be perfect for proto shield. You could stack on top. And so now it's very common to stack these shields, which is really good. Um, yeah. And we just sell them in a set and you get basically all of the ones that you could possibly need for stacking any kind of Arduino shield. Um, we show it here with the um, a wing shield, but you know, there's a lot of shields you can stack. And we work hard to try to make all of our shields stackable. Um, a lot of our shields use only I squared C maybe, or they only use a couple of pins. We can reconfigure the pins so you can stack them on top of each other. Um, so like, you know, you want LCD on top of your music maker shield, you can just put the music maker shield and then stack the LCD shield on top using stacky headers. Okay, so let's get on to the real new products. Okay. What is this? This is a 12 key capacitive touch sensor. We use I squared C. Uh, it's a very small chip, so we needed a, a good stenciler to be able to make this board, but now we have a good stenciler. Um, so we have this board out, and it basically allows you to have up to 12 capacitive touch keys on one board. We have another capacitive touch board as well called the CAP1188, which is also a good chip uh, from microchip slash SMC, and it does I squared C or SPI. This one does only I squared C. Um, it's a little bit faster, which is for what we want. We have a project we want to use it for, and we needed a fast capacitive touch sensor. This one's much faster. Uh, it also has like some basic proximity capability. So I have a demo, basic demo of it on the overhead. We can go to the overhead. I can show it. So I just have uh, an electrode here with some Pyrolux I soldered on. And this is the board itself. And I have an indicator LED. And if I touch it, actually, it's so sensitive that it, it's kind of in a little bit of a proximity mode. Let me touch it, and the, uh, the LED lights up. And it has 12. And then you can uh, set the address, the I squared C address, to up to four different addresses. So you can have 48 different capacitive touch uh, pads on one I squared C port, and there's also I think code that's been ported to the Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone. So this is a nice basic capacitive touch uh, sensor that you have up to 12 inputs. And um, what's nice about this is uh, it's not very inexpensive. I mean, like it's it's very simple and easy to use. It has a lot of uh, extras and capabilities like uh, sensitivity control and and GPIO. You can use them as outputs as well. I don't know. It's a nice chip from Freescale, I believe. Okay. NPR 121. Next up. Capacitive touch. You touch. Yeah. Okay. This is exciting. This is one of the coolest Raspberry Pi cases for Raspberry Pi Model B that I have seen. Yay! It is the Pi TFT case that we worked on for a very, very long time. 
And then, you know, right after we ordered them, it's like, hey, there's a B plus. But uh, there's, there's still three million yeah. Raspberry Pi Model Bs out there, and there's about many, many, many thousands of Pi TFTs. And so we um, we work on this for a while, but you know, we'll, we will revise it for the B plus. Don't worry. Uh, after we also modify the uh, the Shield to be B plus hatified. Um, it's a nice case with a translucent back, and it has little button things. It was done by Mike Dole, and you can see all these lovely photos that we took. It works with both the capacitive and resistive version of our Pi TFT, and it tilts so you can have it tilt up. You can have a GPIO cable sticking out. Um, if you have a lot of cables sticking out, you might want to put like some Sugru or some bumpers just to make it a little bit grippier. Um, we kind of have to angle the case to sort of clear the... Uh, the uh, composite and headphone jacks, but you can tilt it multiple different ways. I just put it flat, and then I just have it also on the overhead. Okay. Next up. The okay. Cobblers. Okay, oh, go to the overhead. Oh, sorry. All right, thanks. Um, yeah, so this is Pi TFT, and you can see it's just running with the resistive uh, touchscreen, and I've got the SD card, and it's translucent, so you can see the LEDs, GPIO cable, and um, you know, I can I can select stuff, or I can uh, even quit, log out, and go back to the console if you want. And I'll, I'll pull this out and hopefully not unplug it. Um, but the top snaps on, and yeah, there's these little uh, button ads on that let you basically uh, press the buttons from outside the case. And there's a little bit of empty space in the case too. You might be able to cram something in there. But overall, it's you know just a nice little add-on case to uh, your Pi TV. People were asking us for a long time for a Pi TFT case. So here you go. Now you have this and the Pi Bell. OK. OK. Great. We're moving right along. So now what I was meant to do before yes. was to, I know. You so were the, so, cobbler, so the cobbler and the T-cobbler are now Yay, in stock. Yay, we have them in stock now. They, we were meant to put this in last week, but we didn't. But now we have this lovely photo that kind of has this blue tracery effect. Um, we will get these assembled right now. They're in kit form only because we wanted to rush to get them to you as soon as possible. And so we are working on getting them assembled, um, working with a, a factory that we use in San Diego um, or in, uh, in New Jersey, I don't remember which one yep. we're using, to get these assembled for you so that they will come ready to go. But for now, they are a kit. That's yeah. a custom header. Not too bad. Spending like a half an hour or something put together. Yeah. Not even, like 10 minutes. OK, we're still racing, we're still racing through B, these. Ready? B plus. Next up. Accelerometer, we have an MMA8451 accelerometer. Um, basically, we went to uh, DigiKey and sorted uh, triple axis accelerometers that were least expensive, but um, pretty high uh, accuracy and had a wide range. And we were actually, uh, this one came up as the MMA8451. It's a 14-bit accelerometer, triple axis, I squared C. It's just an accelerometer. Um, but the nice thing is that this is used in a lot of like tablets and phones and watches and stuff. And so the price of uh, these accelerometers is, is low enough that we can offer it for like eight bucks or less. Um, but it's really an accelerometer and um, we have code for it for Arduino and you can port it to almost any other kind of uh, microcontroller or whatever. It does use I squared C repeated start, so watch out for that. I think the Raspberry Pi does not support repeated start, but we have other accelerometers. Uh, such as the ADXL 345 and other such things that don't have this repeated start annoyance. I squared C, I hate you. Uh, you know, for something so basic, it's you're always so complicated. Okay. Um, yeah, we added some level shifting circuitry and three volt regulator, so you can use it okay. safely with anything. And next up, we got a little Internet of Things new <clears throat> product. This is from Acme, right? This is Acme, and this is. A company that is headed, started, uh, whatever, I'm not sure exactly, by um, some people who are also at Roving Networks. Roving Networks, which brought you the RN42 Bluetooth, the RN52 like audio Bluetooth, the RN171 Wi-Fi, the RN something 135 Wi-Fi. Anyway, they had a bunch of different things. They were about my microchip, and then I don't know what happened, but um, a bunch of them were like, yeah, we, we really want to do another thing. And so they started another company. Uh, and this is a Broadcom Wicked based uh, module, so it doesn't use a Theros. I don't remember what they use for the for the RN171, but it uses the a Broadcom chip, actually the same chip apparently as the um, Electric Imp. And this is actually meant to be a little bit of a of a competition uh, in the same space as the Electric Imp. It's a smart <clears throat> Wi-Fi module, so it actually like you know you type commands to it, it can auto connect, and it has SSL capability and like soft AP mode, and it's um. It's actually pretty intense, um, and this is the. So I said, like, well, you know, 
a little bit like not so sure if I want to carry the full range yet, but they said, well, why don't you start with this board, which is the starter board. It's a little expensive, but that's because it has everything on it. It has breakouts, it has the module, it has a bunch of buttons, it has a USB connection and power regulation, all that good stuff. It has even a, a thermistor on there for temperature measurements, um, and it can automatically hook into uh, sensors.com, which is a, a web service that they're using for cloud-based sensing. Uh, check out the website and documentation on acme.com for more. It's just kind of a new thing. So this is more for advanced people who are kind of cool with the fact that we don't have like detailed Arduino tutorials for it. But um, I think the Acme team, is they've already shown us a couple tutorials that they're working on. So I think that this will be a very interesting um, way to get microcontrollers online in a very smart and integrated fashion. Okay. And the start of the show besides you is the Power Boost. 1000B. Yay! This is a big deal. That's why it's B, right? B is yeah. a big deal, and it's also for that this is actual big size. inductor. No. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's really big. We had the PowerBoost 500, which was a uh, based on the lesser chip, the 2-amp version of this chip, but, but then we also wanted to do the 4-amp, but we wanted to start with the 2-amp. This is uh, the 1,000-amp minimum um, output. It can actually, it has a 4-amp switch in it. And so it can um, give you, you know, one amp plus from 1.8 volts, which is the minimum. And if you're running it off of a lithium ion battery or lithium polymer battery that gives you about like 3.7 volts nominal, uh, you can easily take uh, two amps out. So and I actually got two and a half. Afterwards, you're starting to, you know, it starts to heat up quite a bit. Um, but you can, you can definitely uh, use this to power a very power hungry project, a robot that, you know, has uh, BeagleBone plus a display plus Wi-Fi plus a bunch of stepper motors, um, you know, draws like two amps or whatever. You can run this off of rechargeable batteries now. Um, really like this chip. It's it's beefy. It's actually an older chip, but that's actually kind of good because it's it's well tested. It's well known. It's quite efficient. It's about like 80 to 90 percent efficient, which is pretty good. And um, we stuck it on a board with some capacitors and. Uh, it has a, a green LED that lights up when it's good. Um, here's the output of, I just have this gigantic battery pack at 3.9 volts, measured, nominal. And uh, it has a green LED to let you know that power is good. Um, this charger doctor will let you know it has about 5.1, 5.2 volts output. That's, we make it the output a little bit high because if you're drawing two amps, your wire will have some voltage drop on it. So to make sure that it's two amps, sorry, five volts at the end of your two amp draw a wire. Uh, we made it like 5.2 volts and it's safe for 5 volt electronics. We just give it a little bit more headroom because uh, we picked a, an adjustable version. Um, you can also, I think this battery is deader. Yeah, so this is a deader battery. Uh, so this LED lights up when the LiPoly or lithium ion battery is uh, close to its end. So you know it's a low battery indicator. And I want to demo it charging a iPad mini, a little iPad mini here. So plug it in and yeah, it's charged. Sorry, it's charging up. You can see a little chargey icon. Maybe I'll take a, I don't know. You can't touch it while you charge. Too good. Yeah, there you go. And then on um, this little thing, give it a second, it will say it's drawing 0.94 amps. So. It has the signal resistors for iPods and iPhones and iPads and all those things okay. to tell it to charge at um, the full amp rate. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of handy. I think it's it's chunkier than the other one. It's a little bit more expensive because there's, you know, bigger capacitors, bigger inductors, bigger PCB. Then the the chip is also a little more expensive because it's a four amp chip. Um, but uh, I don't know. I like it. I think I will be using this for a couple portable uh, Raspberry Pi and BeagleBone projects whenever you need something that like. Or your Galileo. I know the Galileo uses like tons of power, and um, what's nice is that you know you can use this with one of our Light Poly charger boards to create sort of like a UPS system because it's you know you can charge the battery while also boosting at the same time. Okay. So four amp switch, big power boost one thousand. Okay, you did it, Lady. That was new product. Woo. Yay!